the fighter with possibly the most entertaining highlight reel when it comes to celebrations. The one and only Michael Ben and Page. Yes. How are you doing, good, man? Brother? How are you doing? All good. You right, yeah? Yeah, you looking forward to getting <sighs> into camp and getting ready for TFC Unit 299? No way. It's a big start. You know, Kevin Holland's no, no scrub. He's entertaining as well. So, yeah, I think that combination there. It's a, it's a match made for a, a, a big historic fight. Yeah. They've kind of thrown you right in at the deep end. Yeah. No warm-up fights, just Kevin Holland. Yeah, yeah, Great yeah. fighter. How are you preparing for it? When I'm thinking about it, my coach has definitely been on one. Like, yeah. he's like, he's making sure no stone is unturned. I am ready for absolutely everything. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a difficult, difficult camp. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> but that's good though. Yeah. Tired yeah. is good. It yeah, means you're yeah. working. As a Londoner, yeah. come fighting out of Hackney. Yeah. You're fighting on such a well, big scale. You're from that... Westminster. All right, all right. Listen, all right. I, I know, I know, I know. So fighting out of Hackney. Yeah, yeah. From Westminster. How does it feel to represent London on such a global scale like the UFC? Certain things will happen and you're like, oh man, I'm on track. I'm doing, I'm doing good. Like certain people that you meet or maybe have I've looked up to or seen as I've got, I'm growing up now. And it's just nice. I think it's those moments there that's like, oh man, like I, you know, I am doing good. It reaffirms that you're, you're heading in the right direction and you're, you're just doing the right thing. So it just, it feels nice. I think London, London in general, they, you know, we all seem to be doing so big on, when it comes to entertainment, London's just doing so much in music, film, you know, sports. So it's just great to be a part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you feel that sense of community. Yeah, yeah, you really do. You as well. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. You've got such a diverse background when it comes to fighting, uh. mixed martial arts, mm -hmm. um, boxing, <laughs> like, bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. Like, how does those disciplines, we'll, we'll call them, how do you think that they will influence the fight as you get into the octagon with Kevin Holland? regardless of what I've done beforehand, everything is now tailored based on my opponent. So yes, all your experiences help, but technically none of that matters because I've got a completely new opponent. But the disciplines in those different sports, they will aid in being able to switch styles and switch dances pretty quickly, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's been a part of who I am anyway. I've always been adaptable, which is why I've been able to lean into boxing, to lean into bare knuckle, to, to you know, do mixed martial arts, come from kickboxing. So I've always been quite, you know, one thing that my, my, my original coach, my dad, would always get me to do, like he'd handicap you during a spa. So he'd be like, okay, you can't kick right now. Okay, only use your front hand. Okay, only use your back hand. And I was used to switching something on, off, on, off, on. So then when I had to go into boxing, people would be like, oh yeah, but you can't kick. Like, isn't that gonna feel weird? Nah, cause yeah. my coach trained me to work on specific aspects, you get me? For me, it's nothing. And it's gonna be the same thing coming into this fight, work on the game plan and then start just switching those things on just to win that fight. I know, cause I've seen you fight before. You've got a lot of devastating knockout power. What do you believe sets you apart from other fighters? Because you've got a very flashy style when mm -hmm. it comes to fighting. I get power from that, that explosivity going in and out, forward and back. Whereas a lot of people do it from grounding themselves, which I, I'm not against either or. Both make sense and both, there's a time and a place for everything. But I think that's what sets me aside to other, other yeah, athletes. Yeah, yeah. So while they're grounded trying to get that power shot, I'm no longer there. I guess that comes from your previous coach, your dad, mm -hmm. saying switch this off, switch that off, yeah. and this is what you're going to work on. Yeah, yeah, so I guess yeah. it, it worked in the long run. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And it, like the style comes from a, free, a thing called freestyle kickboxing. Very similar to Taekwondo, but freestyle kickboxing, also known as point scoring, mm -hmm. is a kickboxing art that doesn't focus on the power element, it focuses on the speed element. Uh, Wonderboy Thompson has done something very similar. This is why our styles are very similar. similar. Yeah. Not many people have seen, not many people crossed over. So mm -hmm. not many people have seen that style effectively in the cage. So again, Kevin Holland hasn't really got many people to find, to, to, fight, reference, to, to reference me. And to, so how the, his first experience of that style is when he's up against me and some, it's going to be way too late. Yeah, it will be too late. <laughs> it, will, it really will. Because that, that's the kind of shocking, devastating, instance where you're just like, whoa, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to be in that phase when, <laughs> when it's yeah, go time. You know? <laughs> and 
obviously I introduced you about um, having viral celebrations. Mm -hmm. Like we've all seen some, a lot of them online, like the, the Pokeball, the Thanos glove, the Fortnite dance. Where does your inspiration come from? Because obviously you're quite a creative person. Yeah, yeah. Where does the inspiration come from for these celebrations? Because I remember looking at that one with the Pokeball and I was just like, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been that kind of creative person, as you say. My family helped me a lot because I love to just, we're all creative minds. So me and my siblings will always get together before fights. Like, oh, what could we do with this? Oh, we, could do it. we could do that. And we're always bouncing, like just bouncing around. And we're all jokesers. Like we love to just crack jokes or crack on each other. Yeah. And it's just that element that I'm expressing in the cage. I'm just cracking on my opponent. I've already done my job now. I'm just cracking on my opponent. You buy a ticket to, to watch MVP fight. It's not just about what's going on in the cage. It's before during and after. I want to try and deliver you a package. Full show. Full show. That's man. what everybody does. <laughs> yeah. watches these, they want to see the fights, they want to yeah. see knockouts, and then they want to see a show after. Yes, definitely. And you deliver on all, all aspects. Definitely. So you've mentioned a British clash mm -hmm. between yourself and Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. How does the journey to that fight look? Mm -hmm. And then when that fight happens, I said when, yeah. when that fight happens, how do you see that fight playing out? The fact that UFC have shown me the respect of giving me the likes of a Kevin Holland, mm -hmm. like you say, deep end. They understand that, no, you've done work already. So if, we're, if you're gonna come here now, there's, who we, we're not, not rebuilding somebody. Yeah. People know who you are. So can you, just, can you execute over here? So we're gonna start you here. Great. If you, you only have to look sidestep to Michael Chandler, had one fight and then got a title shot. You only have to look there to know that it's not going to be many. I reckon one, maybe two fights, and then we're, it's, that's, it's it. People are going to be wanting that fight. I genuinely believe I'm going to make him want to wrestle me for him to just keep a hold of his belt. Um, so again, my game plan is just making sure my wrestling level just is like so on point to the point where he is forced to fight me in my area solely. You can't change. We're not going to the floor for anything. You have to fight me here and you have to be a better striker than me at that point. And I don't think he is. Okay. That, I mean, that would be one fight that I feel like the British public would oh, fully want to 100%, see. 100%, yeah. Leon Edwards, Michael Burnham Page, yeah. title on the line. Yeah. Massive. I mean, it's a massive fight. Massive. Now, you've come little... <laughs> nice little kimono ish, <laughs> kimono esque <laughs> cardigan. You, you're known for having quite a good style. Mm -hmm. Like, you've modeled for the likes of Hugo Boss, Everlast. Mm -hmm. So, would you say that your fashion style kind of represents not only your fighting style, but the, the side of you that you want to show outside the octagon as well? I think a lot of people are just drawn towards the same things just because it's, you know, it's big, brand. it's big brands, it's expensive, it's blah, blah, blah. But I like to even to kind of lean into even uh, like the African stuff. I do a lot of, you know, heritage stuff because it's, it's a story about me when I'm, when I'm actually, when I'm dressing. The kimonos and stuff like that is my upbringing. I was raised on watching martial arts nonstop. Like I've seen the majority of martial arts films that are That's out there. Everything. <laughs> Everything, you see what I'm saying? So I love the Japanese and Chinese attire as well. Um, and then obviously the urban London feel, I like to try and mix that and incorporate that as well. So um, for me, the fashion is just me telling my story. That's it. Aside from fashion, mm -hmm. you, you're friends with JJ, KSI, mm -hmm. and a lot of other famous personalities in the UK or abroad. Do you think that that broad appeal um, in the MMA world kind of brings more people to it for one? And then how do these relationships with people that are outside the MMA world impact your training? As being raised in martial arts, like traditional, uh, Lao Ga Kung Fu was my original, the original thing that I did. You had to show respect to everybody. Uh, unless there's any disrespect there, then I just give you respect. I don't care if, you, if you're the, the cleaner, the, the, who, the, the CEO, it, same respect. When I meet the likes of whoever, I don't know, like 50. Mm. The reason why we still continue to speak is because he's like, oh no, actually genuine, like, okay. It's not just, there's no hype. I, I, I can separate the, I looked up to you and I, 
was raised with a lot of what you've done from the person that you are. Yeah. Do you think that those relationships impact your career? Um, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, for example, um, 50 wanted me to come out to uh, film on one of his shows. That's massive. He's just doing it like, oh no, it'd just be good. I think it'd be good. Like, yeah, I'd love to work, do some more work with you. But no, that actually does something for me. Yeah. And it's not an in, like, intentional thing. I'm not going there to be like, let's see what we can get out of a person. But like I said, if you click with somebody, you know, JJ coming to our gym, uh, training with us, again, same thing, we get on. Just about to say about JJ, because obviously you helped train him for a few of his fights. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, you can see that your style is kind of rubbed, rubbed up onto up, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does the coaching element side of things compare to the being in the octagon yourself? And is there any transferable skill? So I used to, I used to coach way more back in the day because I run, we run schools as, as a family business, mm -hmm. we run schools like the hands down martial arts style, literally called hands down martial arts just because it's very reference of who I am, who we are. I really love seeing progression in people. I love seeing success for people and just in, in all aspects of life. But if I'm helping you in martial arts, I really want to get oh. you there. You know what I mean? Um, but because of that, it, because I put so much in, it takes away from me for myself, which is why I had to take a step back. What I've given to the gym is that style. My coach is now taking that on board. And every time somebody new comes in, he's like, look, this is what's good for you. We'll see how, like, Michael Chauvin, da, 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 okay, cool. And then he's back on them. Yeah. So even with like KSI, I don't do the most work with him. My coach is the guy that's on his neck all the time because I can't, I'm, I'm out here mm -hmm. trying to pursue your dream, pursue my thing and keep, and keep prog and progressing in what I'm doing. You've given your style to your coach. Your coach has then given your style to other fighters, yeah. up and coming or yeah. current fighters. Yeah. And you see that change in their style. You must feel a sense of like satisfaction. Like, yeah. 100 percent, man. 100 percent. The same way, like I said, when people meet you and they show that respect, it's nice, man. Like regardless of his, what, what part of it you that it touches, whether it be your ego, whether it be your whatever it is, these are key reminders that you're you're heading in the right direction and you're doing the right things because obviously the people there's people that you're picking up behind you it obviously means that it's something worthwhile so yeah i'm definitely happy so continue to talk about big personalities in the uk mm -hmm. i heard you're going to be in big nasty's music video <laughs> <laughs> uh, like how, how do you manage your commitments with fighting mm. and mix it with commitments with friends and doing favors for friends? Fighting comes first because I, without the success of fighting, none of this stuff exists. If I wasn't known for being MVP, I probably wouldn't be in a big nasty video. So mm -hmm. you always have to prioritize what got you there in the first place. Now, I'm always gonna have down times, you know, MMA fighters, you know, twice a year, three times a year if you're, if you're lucky. The most I've actually fought is five times in a year, but that's me really being aggressive with it. Mm -hmm. So we do have time. I train all the time anyway, but if I'm not training for a fight, I can accommodate one session here mm -hmm. to, and like I said, Vinas is my boy. Yeah. Uh, again, he's the kind of guy that would just video call me while sat on the toilet, <laughs> doing some random stuff like that. And just be like, what's good, Sensei? You're a United fan. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I mean, You're disappointed. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed. I'm not, I'm not going to say disappointed. But I just, I know you're a United fan. And I just wanted to ask you about the work you did on the We Are United campaign, like how that came about and then what it was about, what it means to you. Especially with unity. Anything that unites people, I don't mean it in a, in a pun way, but <laughs> unites people uh, for a, a good cause. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just through channels that I'm already in support of, it just makes it 10 times easier. And obviously they knew uh, um, United supporter. Uh, they they actually send me the newest kits every year as well, which is nice. Yeah. Again, it's just weird to be raised on watching these things. And then again, that's another kind of moment that happens that's like, man, you're doing well. The fact that they see, you know, they've taken the time to push it to one side mm -hmm. and send it to me. Yeah, no, so yeah, again, anything I can do to give back, definitely. You said that your dad was your first coach, so am I right in saying that you came from, you, both your parents did martial mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. um, but obviously your mum took a step back when she was raising you. Mm -hmm. How's that influenced 
your fighting style mm -hmm. and the disciplines that you chose? You know, the kickboxing and that, the Laoga Kung Fu is what I've been doing for since literally three years old in terms of being in a class environment. Um, and my parents allowed me to just enjoy that environment. But also my siblings did, I think they were a massive key to me because you're, it, it was something that I was doing for fun with my siblings. Every weekend we're traveling somewhere on that journey down there, we're singing songs, laughing, cracking jokes, playing card games, rare, 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 get there. I'd get my ass kicked all the time for, for a very long time. Um, my oldest brother was very, very good. My sister, she was very, very good. So they were the ones winning all yeah. the competitions while I'm just listening to them talk about beating people up and me getting beaten up. Uh, and then all of my, what I call as like older brothers and sisters that I've created through martial arts that I used to be like, I used to be with them every week. That was what I loved. That's what, that's what I enjoyed. I feel like that back and forth with brothers and sisters, cause I've got brothers and sisters as well. Uh, my brother did Taekwondo. Yeah. So he kind of got me into that. And there was yeah. always that element of competitiveness. 100%. Which makes you go further, and obviously you Way. having your older brother being really good at yeah, it, and then yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up in those situations. Look at where you are now. Yeah, and I think that's what as well having my older brother dominate in the way he dominated, and again a guy called Simon Lewis, who he was he was the MVP at the time, the young up and coming guy that was killing it in that game, and he was my he's like my brother, and I get to watch him, and I, I aspire to being in that same situation. And so that, yeah, that want to get to where they are pushes you further. Would you say that that guided your training and your fighting style and being able to not get, not lose your head in a fight? Because mm -hmm. uh, some fighters do lose the red. Yeah, yeah. And th they just see red and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. go time. But that doesn't always work in their favor. So would you say that the disciplines and principles that you gathered from your parents and your siblings has guided your training and your fighting? It definitely helped with all of that. And I actually, weirdly enough, think, as you say, because we're not guided by the aggression, because initially when you're, you're actually angry and the emotions have come out, I'm not dealing with it in that moment physically. I have to put that on hold, which means you do learn to hold your emotions to one side. But one thing that it does make you is petty. And I'm extremely <laughs> petty. Like, if somebody hit me with a shot one week, I've got this little black book, imaginary black book in my head. I'm like, bitch, I'm gonna get you back. That's <laughs> it. And then I swear to you, and I've, I've, I've been like that since I can remember. And I think it's because of that. So although I can't get you while I'm emotional in this moment, you're gonna be death note. I'm telling you, death note. I'm telling you, death note. When it comes to the sparring, I'm gonna get you back. And all I need to do is get you back once and mm. I'm good. So now sign with the UFC. Mm -hmm. The UFC have, have your record down as 12 and 0. Mm -hmm. with, um, but you've been a professional fighter for the past 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. So you've got a pretty good record. Yeah, yeah. 21 and 2. Yeah, yeah. How do you maintain motivation to improve? as you move into the UFC. Do I still want it? Do I still want to be the best in this area? Do I still want to go through the pain of uh, a camp and feeling like shit in the morning and getting up and still going to training anyway? Do I still want to do those things to achieve these things? I got to look at, sit down and look at myself and be like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> as painful as it is, I still want to be the best and I still want to continue proving that I am the best. And until that question, the answer is no, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep going. Whereas a lot of people, it's either it's the financial side, they kind of, you know, they retire and then have to come back to try and get that extra mm -hmm. payday. Or one thing that it, it is a bit of a drug is the, just the atmosphere of a show. It's, 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 it's hard to even explain walking out into a crowd cheering you. I walking out that. into a crowd just, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I understand. There's that. something, there is, it's, it's a drug. It's, if, it's a drug. If, it feeds your ego, It feeds you, man, like, massively. I think this is why the white collar boxing blew up so much because you get to have a taste of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Your family and friends that you've invited there that are there. It's, it's a great feeling. It's, you know what I mean? To your music and your, your personality. Again, it's, there's so many levels to it. 
sometimes you miss that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking to get into acting and stuff. We already been doing classes and, and, and so on and so forth and feeling very comfortable with that. Uh, so that I'm trying to plug myself into something else. So when I decide to leave, mm -hmm. I'm plugged into something. And, you're and it's, ready to go. I'm ready to go. And I can return and look back and then just go into that father figure mode and be like, oh, that guy's using my style. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man, no, that's sick, that's sick. And just be, and just enjoy that element of it. But I'm plugged in somewhere. Else. Yeah, so moving on into acting and then you'll always have that foot in the door. Exactly. Because people are still using your style. Exactly. I mean, having 50 on your side, there's a good person to have. Yeah, have, yeah, definitely. Especially if you're looking to get into acting. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, Michael, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, man, I can't you. wait for the UFC 299. Neither can I. Miami, bro. it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Miami's a spot, man. You already know, Miami's a spot. Yeah, so yeah, now nah, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, all my family there, so yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, bro, thanks for talking no to problem, me. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me to UFC 299 in Miami, where we're going to see Michael Vernon Page do his thing. And I'm hoping he comes up with some new, some new celebration once he wins that fight. Follow me on socials, at Matt Griffiths, Instagram, TikTok, and I'll put my Snapchat somewhere there as well. And you find me on YouTube. Let's go, baby. UFC 299, let's go.